So thank you Mayank for introducing me and uh, thank you Elite Techno Group for hosting me. Good evening all. I hope most of you are engineering students. And today's section is about how to become a design engineer. And uh, since you are engineering students, I hope most of your seniors might have given some advices. In during my college life I got such advices like my seniors told me that all these engineering theories you are learning, the subject knowledge, the analytical formulation, the physics behind that, they are going to be completely useless in your engineering life. You are never going to use them. It's all about practical experience. So if you have got such advisors, they are completely wrong. Your seniors advice are completely wrong. And why they are advising so? So in this presentation, we will learn how to become a design engineer. Also, we will understand why your seniors are advising such a wrong way and why they are why that is wrong also so let's get started in my opinion if you are a core engineer if you are an engineer from mechanical electronics electronics electrical or civil engineering you can do five jobs in five different areas and what are these five different areas let's understand with help of an example let me let me start my presentation this is the example a journey of an electric motor is getting loaded. You can see how an electric motor is born and finally how it's getting used. The initial stage is goes for fabrication process in a factory or manufacturing. Once the fabrication is done, once the motor is ready, it will go for quality checking or quality assurance. Somebody will make sure that motor is working perfectly well, it is producing sufficient torque and the current values are right. Once the quality assurance is done, when the motor is ready, somebody will buy it. Then some, that person will use it for many years or many months. That is operation. And during this operation, maybe after 12 months or many years, the motor may break down. Then it has to go for maintenance purpose. Right? So these are four different stages of a electric motor. Four different stages in electric motor's life. And the interesting thing is that behind Behind all these stages, there should be an engineer to do this work. Here in this fabrication stage, we'll call him fabrication engineer. In this quality stage, obviously quality assurance engineer. For this operation, an operational engineer. For maintenance, obviously maintenance engineer. Right? But the story is not over it. Even before these four stages, there was a one big stage that we didn't talk about. That was design stage. In fact, in my opinion, this was the biggest stage, the design stage. The motor is initially getting born here. Then it's more for fabrication, quality, operation, maintenance. In the design stage, there was a design, design team, especially for electric motor, a big design team. They had a vision, they had a dream, they had an objective. They designed a motor. By design, what I mean, they designed exact number of slots, number of turns needed for the motor and how much torque it will produce at the peak RPM what will be the peak efficiency and what will the torque curve or even how much temperature what will temperature of the motor when the at the highest load all these things they are predicting they are designing they are calculating they are redesigning it so this is a big task only after the design stage is complete when the design is final is more for fabrication and the remaining operations so obviously you need a huge amount of subject knowledge in design field Without subject knowledge, you will be a complete failure. So if one of your seniors are saying that engineering is all about, core engineering is all about practical experience, the subject knowledge, the mathematics you, you learned, they have no use, then you can obviously guess that they are working in one of these four areas, not in design field. Because if you are a design engineer and if you don't have subject knowledge, you are going to be a failure. It's just not possible without subject knowledge. So a design engineer, in this case, they have innovated a motor, right? From a scratch, from an idea, they built a motor. But that's, that's not the case always. A design engineer can innovate a product, that's true. But most of the time, they will be improving a design. That's the case most of the time nowadays. They can innovate, they can make a new product from scratch, that's obviously fine. But most of the time, what happens in big companies is all about improvements. Even minor improvements, take a steam turbine, the engineers will try to improve the efficiency by maybe by 0.1 percentage. That's a big deal. 
or take an IC engine and uh, try to reduce the pollution developed by 0.5 percentage or a motor reduce the weight of the motor and uh, still maintain the same torque output that's a big achievement material savings and uh, money saving so most of the time a design engineers in big companies established companies will be working on improvements design improvements rather than a new design or innovation but even here for improvements you need a deep subject knowledge and understanding of that uh, technology or physics behind that without that uh, you will be like a car without any proper guidance it won't reach anywhere with just trial and error so we understood a design engineer means the subject knowledge is very imperative you cannot uh, you, you you can't be a good design engineer without proper subject knowledge now the next big question who can become a design engineer the simple answer is that those who can predict the future a funny answer right but i will uh, i will prove this uh, i will prove why this funny answer is right with help of some examples why those who can predict the future can become a design engineer check this three example from three different branches of engineering take this petrol engine so if you ask someone what will happen to this motor uh, engine torque output if i increase length of this connecting rod can they predict it this engine is a working engine is working fine but if i change the length of this connecting rod what will happen to this torque output if somebody can give a good answer logically he can be a good design engineer for ic engine field or take this electric motor now it is having eight pairs of uh, permanent magnets i think it's an ipm cnr motor instead of eight pairs suppose we are using six pairs of permanent magnet then how its performance will be affected how the torque will vary how the efficiency will be affected if you can give answer for this if you can predict answer for that then you are a good design engineer for electrical machines or this antenna now this is the design of the antenna instead of this design if you are trying some other design how the radiation patterns will be affected if you can predict that you are a design you are a good design engineer for antenna technology so those who can predict the future more specifically predict the future of some technical thing they can become a good design engineer so as we discussed earlier to predict the future you need good subject knowledge right of course subject knowledge is the king and nowadays you have lot of software with you lot of design software analysis software and i will call them tools your subject knowledge is the king and using all these tools all this software your life will be more easy and more productive and what i have listed here is a fraction of the software which is already available in the market the actual number of software are maybe 10 times of this and uh, these are quite a fascinating thing if your subject knowledge is strong and uh, if you know one of maybe three or four of these tools in your domain and you are going to be very efficient design engineer and if the, if the reverse is a case suppose you have you don't have much subject knowledge you know the software really well then how that can be productive it's like uh, you have a car there is a road but you don't know how to drive is to be like that you have the software you know how to use it but you don't have subject knowledge it will be useless maybe maximum you can make some cad model some uh, drawing etc but uh, because all the software even the expedition simulation software they'll throw out wonderful result wonderful cfd results or fa result or system based simulation but how to predict these results are right because these software are just machines almost like machines they can predict anything is you to decide whether the results are right was there any was there any mistake in my software settings to predict whether the results are right you have to be a good engineer with good subject knowledge and physics understanding and even consider this scenario suppose you got a result right but the result was not fair enough to be a good design for that product now you want to change the design but how to have a proper judgment from that result this is a design modification i have to do to improve my performance so all these things are impossible if your subject knowledge is very weak so my suggestion is that in your four years of engineering life focus on improving your subject knowledge focus on the fundamentals of the concept to understanding try to understand all the technology from the basis of physics very deep level of understanding that's really going to help you because your textbook might have some definite problems but things are changing rapidly around the industry well people are coming with new ideas new technologies those technology might not have explain in your textbook but if your physics is strong you can easily predict you can easily design them also if your mathematics is also strong 
you can easily quantitatively predict how much will be the torque improvement by motor or what will be the new radiation pattern of the antenna or what will be the torque variation of an IC engine. You can predict with uh, proper values. This will be increased by 5%, there will be reduction by 2%. If your mathematics is also good, based on your fundamental understanding, you can uh, have analytical modeling and uh, you can model them mathematically. So the mathematics you are learning your engineering life is not useless, it's very, very helpful if you're a design engineer. And obviously all, with all these tools, your life is going to be more easy. And uh, nowadays the trend I can see in engineering college is that they take their subjects very casually, thinking that it's all about practical knowledge, it's all about experience in software. And I have interviewed many candidates. Uh, we have a design team here. We are de doing some product development in, in my company. So for their recruitment, I have recruited many candidates and some of them are like that. They know the software. They know SOLIDWORKS, they know ANSYS, but zero subject knowledge. Then what's the point? Uh, they won't be able to use it. They won't be able to make any proper judgment from the result. So don't get trapped with this, uh, go, don't get trapped in this uh, false advices. Subject knowledge is always the key. In fact, the duty of your engineering colleges in four years of engineering life is to transfer the subject knowledge properly and uh, learn the software to make them learn the software is not their duty it's your duty you have to learn it because number of the software are infinite there could be more than 100 such software so if your engineering college cannot you cannot teach all this software it's your duty you have to decide which area you have to focus you cannot focus on the, all the areas of a branch even if you're a mechanical engineer you cannot focus on the all the design departments you have to decide, this is my area of specialization in mechanical engineering and learn three or four sub software. Also focus on subject of, uh, focus on fundamentals of the subjects, learn it really well. Then you will be a deadly combination. All the companies will want to recruit you with proper subject knowledge and proper software knowledge. You will be a perfect and amazing design engineer. And after all this computer design and theoretical design, next comes prototyping and experimentation. But if your design is strong, there won't be much issue at all. The experimentation will go nice. The results uh, you get in experimentation will be same as the analysis result and it will be a successful product. And you might be now wondering what is my qualification or credibility to advise on this subject because my main business is a YouTube channel, right? So before starting this YouTube channel, in fact, I was working for companies. They were developing products. I was a product developer initially. After that, I even worked, I, I even developed uh, simulation software, which will simulate engineering phenomena, mechanical phenomena. And uh, even after starting this YouTube business, we continued our engineering service work. We continued for two, three years. There was a gap in between. Now we are again developing products. Now we are again developing educational, innovative products, new products. So those are not improvements. They are completely new, completely innovative. It's quite exciting. So. There again, now we can feel that without proper subject knowledge, we cannot develop any product. There will be ideas and suggestions about how to predict uh, which ideas to select, which idea to go with. If you have proper subject knowledge, you can predict things easily and you can, you can save your design time, the design iteration time. Yeah, that's all from my side and uh, any questions, we can get into that.